Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP Tom Morgan. In this video, we're going to build our own family group video room using Azure Communication Services and Azure Static Web Apps. Um, all this is written up in uh, the blog post that I'll link to in the source code as well. Um, but I wanted to do a quick video to show you um, how it all works. There's going to be no code in this, so if you're not a developer, please don't think you can't do this. You absolutely can. But as we're going through, if you are a developer, you're absolutely going to see places along the way where you're going to want to dig in, change it, make it your own as well. All right, so let's get started. Um, let's go over to my screen. Okay, so I've created a brand new um, Azure resource group, um, and I'm, we're going to put everything in here so it's nice and clean and you can kind of see what we're doing. So first thing we're going to do is create a Azure Communication Services instance. So to do that, I'm going to go to Add. Um, I'm going to search for Communication Services. And this is what it looks like, Communication Services by Microsoft. And I'm going to create one of those. And blah, 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 blah. we're going to put it in that resource group. I'm going to give it a fancy name, um, My Family um, Group Call. Let's do that. Review and create. and. Um, couple of steps and that's going to go away and create itself now. Uh, it doesn't take very long. Um, this kind of deployment process, we'll just wait for it to finish. Um, in the meantime, whilst that's doing, um, the next thing we need to do is to go and deploy our code. Now I'm using sample code um, from the Azure Communication Services team. They have a sample project for creating um, like a group calling scenario. I've taken that, I've taken some bits out of it. I've added like an entry code thing. Um, I've just made it a bit more suitable for doing like family group calls. Um, so that's what we're gonna use. All right, so my um, ACS instance has been created, perfect. So let's just go to it and have a quick look at it. So the only thing we need to do here is go and get our access keys. We need the access keys to put into the code so that the code is able to use the service. Makes sense, right? Um, so let's go to keys and We've got some keys here and wait for them to load. Perfect. So what we're going to take one of these connection strings. And so I'm just going to copy this connection string. Uh, let's go into Notepad and let's just pop that connection string in there like that. We're going to come back to that later. That's all we need to do here. This is all set up and ready to go. No changes needed. Okay. Next thing you're going to do is go and get that code. So if you go to this URL, uh, which I put on the screen and is in the blog post and all the rest of it, this will take my code, um, which I've made a template, and it will create a repository in your GitHub um, repo that is just a, a complete copy of that code that you can take and use. So let's do that then. So let's call this my family uh, video call. Perfect. Uh, let's make it private for now. Um, give it a nice description, dooby dooby doo. And we're gonna click create repository from template. Okay, so that's going to go away and create the repository. And uh, it takes a few seconds. And that's going to, what you're going to see is a whole load of code. So if you are a developer, great, you can dig through this. Um, it's all uh, in React and uh, it's ready to go to Azure uh, Static Web Pages. If you're not a developer, don't worry about it. Um, you can kind of basically ignore it, really. Um, but just the fact that you've got it here is enough for now. We're going to make some changes to this in a minute, um, but nothing major. All right, so we've got our code, we've got our ACS instance. What we don't yet have is our static web app. So let's go and create that right now. Uh, okay, so how are we gonna do that? Let's go back to here. Uh, let's go back to, oh, where's the resource group I created? Uh, here it is. So we've got this resource group. It's only got one thing in it now, which is this communication service. Let's go and add a static web app. Perfect. Static web app currently in preview, um, but uh, but that's what we're going to use anyway because they're awesome. So let's go and create one of those. Pop, 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 pop. Um, we need to give it a nice name. Let's call my family group call app. We'll choose a region um, and make sure the resource group is the one. And now this is really important. This is different to lots of other Azure. Um, resources. This one we're going to sign in with GitHub. And the reason for doing that is that we're going to link the code that we just downloaded to this web app. What does that mean? It means that the code that we have in GitHub is going to be the code that runs the website. And any changes we make in GitHub, GitHub will automatically be pushed to the website uh, using GitHub Actions. That's pretty cool. 
Um, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go sign in with GitHub. Um, I've already signed in, which is nice. So I get to authorize. And now I just need to choose that repository. So um, I need to choose this one, this My Family Video Call that I've just created. So uh, there it is. And you want to choose the master branch, which is the only one that's available. And then come down to Build Presets and choose Custom. And then you want to leave all of these exactly as they are. You want to make sure this API location one says API. All the others you can leave exactly as they are. You can click Review and Create. And when you're ready, click Create. Now, that's going to create the static web app, which is great. It's also going to kick off that process of taking the code from GitHub and pushing it into the website. You can actually see this happening. So come back over to GitHub here. Um, this is the repository that we just created, that we've just linked. So if I go to Actions, look at this. There's an action that's just, just been kicked off just now. Um, it's currently waiting. It's pending about to start or it's running or something. Um, and it's you can see here it says Azure Static Web App CI CD. And what that's doing is taking the code compiling it and pushing it up to Azure Static Web Apps. All very, very cool. There is one gotcha, however. Um, at some point, uh, whilst this is running, this is going to stop working. And it's going to stop working for um, some errors that are actually warnings, but the setting, the default setting is to have um, to treat any warnings as errors. So what we're going to do is turn off that setting to treat errors as warnings warnings as errors, sorry. Um, and then we can rerun the um, that build and it's going to succeed. All right, so I'm going to pause the video because it's still waiting. We'll wait for it to fail. Um, we'll come back. I can show you it failed because that's exactly what's going to happen for you. We can talk through how to fix it. We'll run it again. Pause the video. Okay, resume the video. Uh, so let me share my screen again and you can see it's failed big cross mark. Let's have a look. So we can click into this and actually see uh, exactly where it failed and what went wrong. Um, whoop, 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 whoop. Um, so you can see there's some things here. Um, these are actually warnings, um, but it is failing the build. So we're going to make some changes to fix that. So first thing we need to do, uh, let's go back to where we were. Um, if we come back here, the if you've super eagle eyed, you may notice that that process of doing the build actually added this file in at the top because it's actually got a different date to all the others it was added afterwards and if we go into here this is the um the pipeline it's actually the definition of the pipeline of the kind of whole cic cd pipeline um, and it's in a thing called yaml but don't worry about that if you've no idea what that is um, and we can actually we can edit this so um, i'm going to edit this now to make a fix so you want to do this as well if you're kind of following along as well you want to do exactly what I'm doing, Get come to this point, and we're going to edit this file here. Uh, okay, and come down to the name, um, and let's have a look. What we want to do is, um, I'm going to add a new entry in here for environment, or env map environment variables, uh, like this, and the key is going to be CI, and the value is going to be false. So just like that. Um, we've just added those bits right there. That's all we're going to do. So now we're going to click start commit. We're going to commit changes and commit them directly to the master branch. So we'll click commit. Okay. And if we go back to actions again, we'll notice it's kicked off another action. Because we've changed a file, it's going through that process of building everything again and pushing it up to um, our website. Okay, so this time we'll wait and hopefully this time it will succeed. So pause the video and resume the video. Okay, perfect. So you can see the uh, build has succeeded. What this means is that all that code has been compiled, pushed over to the website and the website is ready to go. A couple of things we need to do though um, and we're basically done. So let's come back over to the website. Um, this was the, uh, the web app portal. We haven't even been there actually, the static website. Uh, we were just waiting for it to succeed. So let's go there now. Um, okay, so a couple of things you need to know. So the URL here, this is the URL that you're going to give people to go to your website. So uh, we can actually just open this, um, it's going to load and look, it's loaded the site, it's loaded the code, um, it's all ready to go. Couple of things though, don't click that button just yet because we're not quite there. There's some things we need to tie up. Specifically, 
um, we need to tell this code about our ACS instance that we created in Azure. It doesn't know about it yet. We need to create the entry code and we also need to create a group ID for, um, for the group room. So we're going to do all three of those things. They're all done in the same place, um, which is down here in environments. So they're environment variables. So I'm going to click environments. Um, and where do we go? Where do we go? I can never remember. Uh, let's have a look. I don't think it is environments at all. I think it's configuration. Yeah, there we go. So environments. So let's do this. I'll keep this in the video actually because it's interesting. This kind of gives you that visibility of where the code is coming from. So you can see the master branch, the last update time. This will take you to your GitHub instance as well. What you can do if you want to is actually push to a staging environment and then push from staging to production um, as well. So you've got some really nice um, capabilities with uh, the integration that static uh, apps have with uh, GitHub. Anyway, what we were here to do um, was add some environment variables. So in configuration, I guess they're called application settings, not environment variables, that's why. Anyway, um, so you will notice that we have no application settings here. Now, if you were to come here before you'd pushed the code, you actually wouldn't be able to get to this page. You'll get an error message to tell you that you can't set application settings because you don't have any API endpoints. Um, one of the really nice things about Azure Static Web Apps, um, again, you don't need to know any of this. This is You can completely ignore this if you're not interested, but it's just as an aside. One of the nice things about um, uh, Static Web Apps is that you can write Azure functions for them um, and have them almost like a server-side API. So if I go to functions, you'll notice that as part of the code that got pushed um, from, uh, from GitHub, there are actually two functions in here, um, and these are like uh, Azure functions. And so this allows us to kind of protect how we get the user token and the group ID um, and protect it behind, kind of keep it in the configuration and not have to put it in the code and protect it behind an API call. So that's really, really nice. And it all means it's all bound up inside a single instance, a single application. You haven't got like an Azure function to deploy and manage and everything. It's all in the one place, which is really, really nice. Anyway, application settings. We need to create three of these. Again, all the specific detail of this is in the blog post. Um, the first one we need is the ACS connection string. So it's called ACS connection string. The value is the thing that we uh, took before, um, that we took from our ACS instance, Incl all of it, including the endpoint equals the whole thing. So I put it all in here like this and click OK. Next thing we need is the entry code. So that's just called entry code. This can be whatever you want. Um, I would suggest it's more secure than one, two, three, um, and I'd suggest you change it. But anyway, this is the code that people will put in to get into your room, basically. And finally, a group ID. Now this can be any GUID, but it does need to be a GUID. So um, if you don't have a GUID, go to a GUID generator and get one. Um, and I'm just gonna put one in here. Um, Everybody who uses your room will go into a group that is kind of keyed by this group ID. So if you're a developer, there is a potential here for you to kind of support multiple groups with different group IDs and stuff. But right now, um, we're just kind of supporting a single one, uh, which is returned from that function that always returns whatever is in this application setting. So with those three things set, we are good to go. So we're gonna click save. Important step, don't miss that because it won't save automatically because it restarts the whole thing. So that's done, and so we can go here and refresh this, and we're good to go. So let's go. Um, we need to put in that entry code. Um, so let's put in the entry code. Um, it checks it, and assuming it's correct and everything works, um, we're going to go to the next stage, which is this one where we get to put in our name. We get to choose a camera. Uh, I'm going to choose the other camera that I'm not using, um, so you can kind of get a different weird view, but like not the camera I'm using to record this, obviously, because that would be weird. Um, and let's choose a microphone we're not using. And we can click Start Call. And anybody else that you share this uh, with as well is going to get exactly that same experience. Um, they can also do the same thing. And you can have multiple people in here. And you're in a group session. So really, really cool. Um, nice, exciting uh, way to... Uh, to, to quickly and kind of easily make a, um, a group room session for family calls or um, kind of anything else like that, really. 
Uh, so I hope that's been really useful. I hope you found the video helpful. Go check the blog post as well for all the details. Um, you've got the template. Um, if it's been useful, click subscribe or you can click the bell thing to get a notification when I do new videos because I do quite a few, like I do weekly ones now. Um, and also I'm doing how-to videos on different parts of both Microsoft Teams development around the calling um, stack and the, and the way you can use Microsoft Teams to create applications, as well as some of this Azure stuff, the ACS communication stuff, which is um, really uh, exciting and interesting as well at the moment. So uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, um, T-O-M-O-R-G-A-N, uh, and you can check out my blog as well, which is blog.thoughtstuff.co.uk. Have a great day.